Hi, my name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today I thought that we would take what we learned in the lesson on brayering, you know, the one with the stripes, and apply that to, um, to a simple landscape project. So this is what we did in the other video and, uh, and now we're going to take those uh, nice tricks and we're going to apply them to this piece of artwork here. So the first thing we're going to do is stamp. We're using Clarity Card. Let's get our ingredients sorted out. We're going to use Clarity Card. We're going to use a black archival ink pad for the stamped image because you get a beautiful crisp image. And then once that's dry, then we'll use a mask for the moon and then some torn paper for the landscapes. But the trick is to get that lovely airbrushed effect. OK, let's get started. I'll move this out of the way. I'll put my glasses on and then we can get going. Right, I've got a mat in the background. We always stamp on, on a hard surface. And I'm going to take my, my boy in flight. I'm going to ink him up. I'm going to take the ink pad, as you can see, to the stamp. And because we're working on coated stock, the Clarity card is coated stock, um, the ink sits on top, takes a little while to dry. So we're going to hover with the handle, decide where we want to put the lad, and then we're just gently place him on the card and press in the centre. We don't even have to press that hard. We just have to make sure, it's a large stamp, just have to make sure that we get good black coverage. And then when we lift, get a lovely black crisp image. If you've got some imperfections, don't worry about it. We can sort that out right at the end with a black micron pen. Then what we've got to do is blot or wait, whichever comes first. And once we've done that, it takes about five minutes. Because it's coated stock, it takes a little while. You can see it's quite wet. So for the sake of the video, what I did was, I did one earlier. There we go. In true Blue Peter style. This one's already dry. And then what we're going to do is take our moon and just drop our moon into the middle of the picture like so. Right, so this is a mask. Um, we do these, we, we make loads of masks, they're brilliant even if I say so myself. Right, now we're going to use the, the brayer to do the background. So I've got my brayer and I'm not going to use a permanent ink pad on my brayer. Refer to lesson with brayering. This time I think I'll use, I'll use my blending mat and I'm going to use my Midnight Blue Artistry ink pad. So I'll just use that one. Now I'm going to apply the ink directly, there we are, to the blending mat and then I'm going to just spread the ink out on the blending mat like so. And now I know that I've got the ink, I've avoided that edge nicely. And then I'm going to start up here and I'm going to gently just start moving the ink into the sky. And you you know if you if you watch the other video how to avoid striping you can see how easy that is. So if I want it a bit darker I can go in Pick up some more ink again on my, on my blending mat and I can come in again and just add a little more depth if I choose to. Okay. All right, so I've done that. Then you can see here we've got the sky. Lovely airbrushed effect. No stripes whatsoever. Now I'm going to turn this round because I'm, I'm now I'm going to do some hills in the same way. If we have a look at the original, let's just take the original. These are the hills. I'm doing the blue ones next, the ones in the background. So let's have a look at it. You can see there. These are the hills that we're sorting out now. OK, so first of all, I need a piece of torn copy paper. So I'm going to tear my copy paper like so. If you struggle with tearing your copy paper, can I just point out that on the edge of the blending mat, there is a wave and you can just tear the copy paper along there. That works really, really easily too. I've already got mine. That's fine. And because I'm a lefty, I'm just going to start with the hill at the bottom. There we go, like so. And I'm going to hold my masking. Uh, I'm going to hold my mask in place. If I, want, if I wanted, I could use a piece of masking tape. So not a bad idea when you start out. Let me show you just because it, when it moves, it's annoying. So we're going to decide where we want our first hill. Let's put mine like that. Then I'll flick this over and I'll just attach 
the, the mask at the back like so. Right, I can add a bit more ink like so too. And then I'll just ink up the brayer again. And now we're gonna just add ink in there. And you'll see that because it's coated stock, what's great is that you can get a really good hill look like so. And it doesn't, um, you know, it, because it's coated stock, there's no stripes whatsoever. You haven't got to worry about the stripes at all. If you let that dry, you can add depth. Look, I can go in again, add a bit more color, and I can make that even darker. As it's the hill up the front, maybe I want to. Okay, so I've done that. I've got that really lovely and dark now. Then what I'm gonna do is lift this up, for example, and move my hill over a bit. Now this time, I stick it down again like so. I'm not gonna re-ink now because I want this hill to be in the background. So you see now, by doing that, I've got another hill and it's sort of faded out that one a little bit. And I'll lift this up and I'm not gonna re-ink again. And this time I'll put one even further up like so. But this one wants to be real subtle. I'm not re-inking and this time I'm just gonna flick from that side. Just flick from that corner there. And this coated stock is great for that. You see how, how faded that is, right? If we want it a bit more, we can always go back in and add a little bit more. It's not the end of the world. So you'll see now how you get that lovely muted effect in the background. There we go. So we've got a nice, nice effect there. Now what I can also do, let me just blot this for a moment. Make sure that it's nice and dry. Normally we'd leave it to dry for five minutes. And then what we can do is just lift off our moon. And there we have a really nice effective landscape. The moon masks are repositionable, so you can use them again. So let's just go to one that I've done that's dry that we can work on. There we go. So this one's nice and dry. And now I can, I want to show you a trick. Let's just take a look at this. So it's dry, and it's, but I would like to add a little bit more depth, like a darker hill at the front and a few more hills. So if we look at the front one, I want to do this hill here, these hills here. So let me show you what we're going to do now, right? Permanent ink. That's the only way I'm going to be able to cut across. If I use permanent ink on my brayer, then you know it's going to stain it. So instead of that, Let's add a little bit more interest to the hill as well. Let's change the hill so it's not the same hill all the time. Now this time, I'm going to cut through here, for example, like so. But I'm going to use, not, not my brayer, I'm going to use my brushes. Because I want to use a permanent ink pad. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I, let me just, so this needs to be, stuck down so it doesn't move while I'm working because I only want to do the one hill so I want to make sure it stays in place. All right. Okay, I'm cutting across a hill here. So if, for example, I use this blue, right, as I cut across there, what you'll see is you can see the other hill in the background. So it means that it's not opaque. So I, it's not so great because you, it doesn't make sense. Look, you can't get the depth. You can't get the level of depth because the, the hill is transparent. If I was to do this with a permanent ink, I know it would work. Perhaps I could even use a brush and lift the, enter the, the world of the brushes. I could maybe use a brush. Nope. You see this translucent dye-based ink, it, there's so much ink in there, I can't get that depth. So I'm going to have to use a permanent ink. Now let's have a look. If I use my brush directly onto an archival ink, so I don't want to use my brayer on there, do I? Now watch what happens. When I use an archival ink, you'll see immediately that I can actually change this quite radically. Watch. See how it's covering up? It's brilliant for this. So without, I'm not spoiling my, I'm not spoiling my, um, my brayer by using permanent ink, but I'm getting that amazing effect. Look, so I can lift this off and I've used the black ink pad. Right. Does that make sense? And you can't see the hill through it. 
So for example, now let's, let's go up here and let's add another hill through the background here. And this time I'll just spin like so. Let's just spin. Just keep bringing in a little bit of a, hang on a minute. Let's see what I'm doing. Yeah, there we are. So I can just add a little bit of depth here and you'll see what happens is when you do this, you can get a really good background hill. There we are, look. So you see what we're doing? We're building up our background scene, really lovely. And then you can use the brush while you've still got some ink on your brush as well. Let's just take that masking tape away. If you've got some ink on your brush, what you can do is just use the brush just to age the edges a little bit. So this will just distress the edges a little bit and just make it not look quite so crisp and pristine. So let's just turn this round and you'll notice I'm leaning on my, on my scrap of paper. But this is just a really great way of adding a little interest to the edges. So we'll just turn that round like so. So just work like that. Right. And you'll see this is a really simple way of creating a really nice background. And once the ink is dry, let me just lift this off. We're nearly there. Then you can actually polish this ink as well. So I can take my, my, my tissue or my paper towel and I can buff up this card. That's the magic of the Clarity card. Let me just, I don't want to put my fingerprints all over it though, because it does take fingerprints as well. So just going to buff this card up and you'll see it comes up like glass, really lovely. So we'll just polish it a little bit. There we go, both ends. And those hills will come up like a print, like a really nice print. So there we are. And you can see now, if we take this and we just transfer this, if I can just show you the original, you'll see now how we were able to create the hills in the background with the brayer and torn paper, and then add additional hills over the top by using a brush and permanent ink. So there we are, that's it for today. Just a simple, just a simple project showing you how to use a brayer to create hills and a landscape. There are lots of other YouTubes that I've done using this technique. The, um, the lesson on brayering is a really good one for starting out and I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, do join our, um, our followers here on YouTube and, uh, and I look forward to seeing you next time. All the best now, bye bye.